Yeah, open mouth and certain foot. Hallelujah. Go ahead and open your Bibles to the second chapter of the book of Acts. We've been teaching since um, the first of the year on Sunday mornings. Now understand on Sunday nights we're teaching the ABCs of faith or the fa or faith foundations on Sunday on Wednesday nights. You ought to come out for that. If you're not, listen, that's what I was going to say. If you're not able to make all of our services, understand you can go to our website. We stream uh, audio, but now we're streaming video. So if you want to see our services, you can uh, in HD, 16-9 ratio, 1080p HD, or, or I. 720. Oh, why are we 720? Because it better. Okay. Well, we're filming. We're recording in 10 to 80. All right. We're streaming in 720, like Fox, the Fox Channel 8 Fox does their broadcast in 720. So, anyway, I'm disappointed. You just deflated my whole thing there. <laughs> All right. We're streaming in 720p HD. 16-9 ratio. So you can see us in. So now are we on the, on, on, are we on the Roku yet? We are on Roku, Blueberry, and we are on <laughs> We're on Our video. Yes. So if you've got a Roku box, you can watch us on your television. Right. Hallelujah. So um, Dr. Bill will put it on our website how to do it, right? Yep. It's done yet? <laughs> I thought Bill was really good. <laughs> Usually I just say it and it's done, so hallelujah. But uh, the instructions on how to how to access Roku, Blueberry, or, or the different ones, uh, he'll, he'll fix that up for, on there and put a, a link to that. Um, but Roku's this new little internet box. We'll just have to start over recording the uh, service, guys. It's a little box you hook up to your TV, and you can download from the internet uh, HD quality programming, HD programming, but we're on that. So if you have that hooked up to your television, you can get in there and see our programs uh, right on your television television at home. Hallelujah. In HD. Isn't that good? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So you don't have to sit around a computer or whatever. You can sit down your, your favorite lazy boy. Get you a cup of coffee. Hallelujah. But you don't want to put your feet up because I might have you running around the room and throwing your coffee everywhere. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. All righty. Praise God. Acts chapter 2. Verses 42 through 45, we're teaching on the church and her mission. Hallelujah. And let's look over there now. Remember, we said bring your Bibles. This is the year of the Bible. Hallelujah. You know, the, every time they have a Chinese New Year, it's the year of something. Whether that Faith and Victory Church, it's the year of the Bible. And the reason we're saying that we got kind of used to just having everything on the big screen and got kind of settled in. And people started, and actually, we started noticing people weren't bringing their Bibles. They were, they were just coming to church and letting the big screen put the scriptures up. And uh, we want you to see it in your Bible. I want you to mark in your Bible. I want you to underline it. If something strikes you, I want you to make a note of it right there in your Bible. Hallelujah. Well, I can't write in my Bible. Get rid of that one. Go to our bookstore. We sell Bibles. You can mark in. Yeah. All right. That's not an original. I got that from Brother Hagin. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 says, And they continued. Actually, let's read verse 41. Then they were glad they received the, Then they that gladly received the word were baptized. They that gladly received. Understand, I know there's a teaching out there right now that everybody's safe, you know, everybody's going to heaven, doesn't matter what you are, all your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. And what they do is they take certain scriptures with an element of truth in it and then misapply them. And they're coming up with what was referred to as universalism. Some are, call, some are calling it universalist, uh, a universal reconciliation theology. The fact is, it says, they that gladly received his word were baptized. What happens if you don't receive the word? You don't get baptized. You don't get saved. You have to receive it. And the same day were added to, unto them about three thousand souls and they can listen and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers and fear came upon every soul and the many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and they sold their possessions and goods and part of them uh, uh, to all men as every man had need and they continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added the, who added to the church? The Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. What's our responsibility? Preach? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brother Hagin said this. I was listening to a, a tape, of his, tape of his recently, you know, because uh, people, you know, say, you've got to convince people to get saved. No. He said the Bible didn't say go into all the world and convince people. It didn't say go argue with idiots. Yeah, right. Hello? He said go preach. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Your responsibility is not to make them get saved. Hello? Your responsibility is to preach the truth. Jesus said they'll know the truth and the truth will make them free. 
Amen. It's not true. Now, Paul, Paul had a, a discussion with a guy, one the king, King Agrippa. Yeah. And after he got done, the king says, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Mm-hmm. Almost. What? He chose not to believe. I said he chose not to believe. You can't do anything about that. They have a choice to make. Your job is to preach the truth. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's your job. To live it, to preach it. Hallelujah. Amen. So, we see some things here. Now, one thing is people are getting saved. So, the church is to evangelize. Let me say this. You are to evangelize. How do you evangelize? You go share the truth. Open doors of opportunity. You share the truth. Amen. I heard Dad said something one time uh, that, that, that struck me. And I, started, I just heard this recently on one of his old tapes. And I thought, wow. He said, you can't cram Jesus down anybody's throat. Yeah. God didn't call us to cram the gospel down people's throat. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He said, now when the door opened the opportunity, I'll, I'll walk through the door and minister. But you can't force stuff down people's throats. Amen. Hello. Amen. That's, that's not the calling. We're just going to share the truth. We're to live it, walk it. Amen. Yeah. Preach it. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. But you can't cram it down somebody's throat. You, you do just as much damage right, trying to cram stuff down people's throats as you can, sharing things in love. I mean, trying to share things. If you're sharing in love, you're doing it right. You're trying to cram it down. Lots of people, a lot of people want to prove something. Yeah. Yeah. They want to prove something. I'm a Christian. Well, listen, I'll tell, tell you what, son, honey. Why don't you walk it? I tell you, there's a whole lot more power in you walking it than there is you talking it. Unless what you walking is, is I mean, unless what you talking is what you walking. Yeah. Hello. Amen. I can't stand it. I'm a Christian. I'm this. I'm that. And then he went out there and act like a dog heathen. That went over big. Everybody just pointing the finger at somebody else and say, there's three pointing right back at me. <laughs> I said, point your finger at somebody and say, there's three pointing right back at me. Come on. That was not a joke. Do it. All right. I command you in Jesus' name. But not so, so they, they listen. They, they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Now remember when we covered fellowship, the word fellowship is koinonia. It's not talking about, you know, that you went out and y'all, y'all laughed all night and you uh, drank near beer and you... Um, I knew a guy, listen, I knew a guy, actually he's in our church, and he ran a pizza place. And, uh, you know, he got saved, you know, he said, well, I got to stop drinking, so he stopped drinking. But then he started drinking near beer, your non-alcoholic beer. It won't long until he was drinking beer beer. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to smoke that legal type stuff that's not marijuana, but it kind of gives you a high. No, it starts from uh, something that the Miley Cyrus was doing. She was smoking bombs of it because it was legal. Something in California is legal. It's not, it's not marijuana, but it was a legal, it was a legal weed. You get them high. You don't need to. Yeah. I love the Lord. <laughs> man, you just need to get high on Jesus. Yeah, amen. Amen. You, I mean, you need to get high on the things of God. My, 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 my. Anyway, how, many, how come you to get off of that? I don't know. But coining the yeah, that, that fellowship, not, not just getting together and, you know, and eating and cutting up and carrying on, having something in common. Remember, we talked about this last week and the week before a little bit. You know, how that the koinonia of the church comes from the fact that we have something in common. Everything we have, listen, I can tell you, that I can go through this room, row by row and person by person and family by family, and I can tell you, there's so many people here that have nothing unnatural in common. But you're here together today. Why? Because we have one thing that's always in common. Yeah. Our relationship with the God, the Father, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, so many churches now are trying to build. I, I, keep, I keep getting back to this and I can't hardly get away from it. Build their churches off of groups of fellowship around common, you know, common interest. And what they're doing is trying to go from the bottom up. And hoping that it'll be, listen, unless we, can, unless we come together first and foremost with the primary emphasis on our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, all that other stuff is just junk. Because somebody will come up with a better rock wall in their church. Somebody will come up with a better gig going on in their church. Somebody will come up with a better smoke show and light show for worship than our, your church. Amen. It has to center on something greater than all those things. Nothing wrong with those things that they're coming from the top down. Right, right. But you're not going to go from the down up. 
It has to start with the, common, the, the thing we have in common, and that is our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and our fellowship with Him. And that automatically will spill over into your love for one another because you love Him so much, and the people that love Him so much are all together. Amen? So we, we, you go back and listen to the services. I can't cover all that again. Okay? So the first thing we covered on, on the first Sunday of January was evangelism. The church has to evangelize. The second thing was the unifying of the saints around the doctrine of the apostles. Now listen, you can't get together and have 15 different doctrines in your church. Well, I believe that everybody's going to heaven no matter what they do. Well, pfft, that ain't going to work here. Because you ain't going to like how I preach. Come on. Uh, I believe that once you're saved, it don't matter what you do. You can't, you can't lose your salvation. <laughs> that ain't going to work here either. Now, don't come in here telling me that just because you sin last week, you're going to hell unless you repent. I don't, I'm not an Armenian. I'm not a Calvinist. I'm a Calmenian. I did not say Carmelian. I said Calmenian. <clears throat> the, the, the truth is in between Calvinism and Armenianism, all right? It's somewhere in between. It's in between. It's not on the extreme. So just call me a Calmenianist. Some of you are going, what's Calvinism? If you don't know, don't worry about it. What's Armenianism? If you don't know that, don't worry. We'll talk to you later about that. <clears throat> but the doctrine of the church, let me say something. The church has to be a place of stability. The church has to be a place of consistency. It can't be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Something new comes down and pastor is not preaching. Oh, he's missed God. Wait a second. I'm going to tell you something. I don't jump on every new thing that comes down the pipe. Amen. I'm going to weigh it out and I'm going to judge it. And I'm going to see if it's of God or not. Hello? I've seen churches jump all over stuff before, and, you know, and then when it's done, they're, they're, they're totally fried. Yep, yep, right. yep. Hello? Mm -hmm. Then you've got to go back and try to fix it all. What about this new hyper-grace thing? This new grace thing? I'm going to tell you something. We, we, we taught on grace two years ago. We taught 12 services what grace is and what grace isn't. Now I'm going to tell you something. Those of you who listen have, have, have kept yourself out of trouble. Because there's been some teaching in that that's so messed up. I mean, it's messing people up everywhere. It is. I, I'm, I'm seeing more and more people get caught up in things and get off the deep end. Well, see, the church has got to be a place of stability. Pastors have to guard the flock. Amen. Amen? And teach consistently. Amen. Just Listen, I love Brother Copeland. Just because he said something last week don't mean I'm preaching it this week. Amen. Tony Cook said a number of years ago, uh, one of our instructors, well, I, actually I went to Raymond with him. He ended up being an instructor, associate pastor for years, and, and working with Brother Hagen for years at, at Raymond. And, and, and I consider him a good friend. And um, he said something a number of years ago, I heard him say this. He said, never export what you haven't fully imported. That's Hello? We got some Christians who are just like, you know, a, a, a middleman. Yeah. Everybody thinks they're impressed because all they're doing is taking something over here and shipping it over there. And they've never exported it. And it never hit their dock. Y'all get the analogy here? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. You, know, you know, we got the oil companies. You know, you know why gas is so high? Because there's about six guys in between. who The gas or oil never goes to their company except on paper. And every time it goes to their company, the price goes up. Well, that's a worldly system. Biblical system is study to show yourself approved a workman who needeth not to be ashamed. Yeah. You don't ever export something you hadn't fully imported. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you can't walk in it, live in it, and act on it, you don't need to be sharing it. Yeah. That went over thoroughly well, I believe, this morning. So, the unifying of this, go back and listen to that service. That was the second Sunday, all right? Then the third Sunday, uh, we got off on... Um, fellowship, koinonia, and we carried that over into the fourth Sunday last week. So we kind of carried that over a little bit, and then we, then we finished up last week with the prayers in the church. So, uh, know, know this. So we've, we've talked about evangelism. We've talked about unifying the saints around the doctrine of the church. Understand this. The Word of God, the written Word of God yeah. is imperative. Yeah. The new teaching out there now is you don't have to have a Bible. You, I mean, you just listen to the Holy Ghost in you. That's all you need. And brother, I told, I, I, this, the dad Hagen had an old saying he used to say, Tommy Rot. Bunk. I don't know what Tommy Rot is, but it's, it must be an old Texas colloquial expression. Because everything he said was, even if it wasn't. I, I, I hear him say, it's an old Texas, East Texas colloquial expression. I say, well, we said that in Eastern Carolina too. <laughs> you know, but that, all Texas all think it's theirs. Yeah. You know, that's just Texans anyway. 
they're the only one that joined, the only nation that joined the union. Hallelujah. You know, and they let you know about it. Texas, and when they don't have U.S. history, they have Texas history. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Unifying the saints. Around the, so the word of God's imperative. Then, pr then fellowship, koinonia, and, and then participation in prayers. We need to pray together. We talked about this last week. Now we're moving over today to the breaking of bread together. Look with me, if you will, to the first book of Corinthians. Now, that was a real quick skimming overview of the past four weeks. Go back and listen to the services. Go buy your Roku box. You can get them off R-O-K-U, right? R-O-K-U, okay. Go on the internet, find them. They have, different, they have four different types. They have a, a standard. They have an HD version. They have an HD version with games. They've got, you know, so you, you go, go find you one, get it, hook it up to your TV, and watch us. Hallelujah. If you don't watch anything else, watch us. Because we're good. <laughs> Why are we good? Because I got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's read here the Apostle Paul's uh, admonition to the church at Corneth. Concerning the Lord's table, now depending on where your, what your background is, if you came out of a liturgical background, which would be Catholic, uh, Episcopal, uh, Presbyterian, you would probably, or Lutheran, you would probably refer to this instead of communion, you would probably refer to this as the Holy Eucharist. Okay, uh, but the Holy Eucharist, the communion table, the Lord's Supper, we're, are referring all to the same thing. It's all in reference, different names, uh, to the biblical practice we find here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Starting here in, oh, let's say, verse 20. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have you not houses to eat and drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Now, this, now you got to understand, King James gets so flowery, even when there's reproof, it sounds pretty. Okay? But you have to kind of cut through the Elizabethan poetic rhythmic language and understand Paul saying, you, you, Should I give you credit for this? No way, Jose! All right? It's not, it's not, this was a rebuke. This was not a pleasant, rhythmic, old English, flowery, you know, exhortation. I, he said, Shall I praise you with this? I praise you not, for I have received of the Lord. Well, what have you received of the Lord, Paul? That which I also delivered unto you. And apparently he had taught this them, them this before. He said, that which I have received, Lord, that which I have, have. Now, this is his first letter, but apparently he preached there and shared this with them already. He couldn't have delivered it unto them. He would be delivering it unto them. Amen. That which I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was uh, betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Underline that. This do in remembrance of me. Okay? Now let's go ahead. Give me a second to underline. For, uh, listen, after the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament, or New Covenant, in my blood. This do ye as often as drink it, in what? Remembrance of me. I know my remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. You can underline that. What do you mean when you show the Lord's death? See, the communion table looks back to Calvary and looks to the second coming. It looks back at Calvary and looks at the second coming in the same, in, in the same instant. You do show the Lord's death till he come. All right? For as often as you eat this, I'm sorry, verse 27. Wherefore, will whosoever... Who, now, how many in here are a whosoever? Now, say, when I teach Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24, everybody goes, oh, I'm a whosoever. Well, you may not want to be this whosoever. Shall eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation or condemnation or judgment to himself not discerning the Lord's body. 
for this cause. Many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. Anybody, anybody got an idea what sleep means here? Can somebody tell me what sleep means here? They did. Are you here? They died not rightly discerning the Lord's body. And others that are alive, many are weak and sickly. That would ever be. Oh, I'm under grace. It doesn't matter what I do. The blessings come on me. My sins are forgiven past, present, and future. Oh, I'm, I'm healed. The blessings come on me. It doesn't matter if I tithe. Don't matter if I give. Don't matter if I sow. Don't matter what I do. All the blessings come on me. I walk in the blessings. He said, here, if you don't discern rightly, you're sick weekly and some are dead. See, we, we, see some, that's why extreme teaching always lead people astray. It, it, it always leads them to a place where they shirk all responsibility, everything's put off on God, and that they're just going to live hunk and door doing whatever they want to do. It's all flesh is what it is. I can do whatever I want to do. There's no consequence to it. He said here, not rightly discerning the Lord's body could get you weak, sick, or dead. Now, I don't think if any one of those is acceptable to how I want to live. I don't want to live weak. I don't want to live sickly. And I don't want to be dead. Y'all hear? Now, I want to go, I, listen, I want to go home and be with the Lord. But I want to live out my full days. I, like Paul said, I want to finish my course. I want to do all that God has for me to do. I want to get to heaven and say, look, you had another 40 years. You were going, this would have happened, that would have happened. This isn't going to happen because you didn't go. Because you came home too early. Well, I got to go. At least I got to go. Well, yeah, yeah, you should get to go home. But man, it's a whole lot better to go home fulfilling your destiny than it is to go early. Yeah. Amen. Are you here? Okay. Now, here, I love this one. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. God doesn't judge anybody. Well, who's judging? <laughs> if we don't judge ourselves, who is doing the judging here? Oh, you're under grace. Just look at the finished work of Jesus. Some of the loneliest stuff you'll see. No. Understand that the Lord's table, you have to rightly discern what it's about. Amen. Rightly discern the body. Walk in the light as he is in the light. Amen. Now, with that being said, let's back up to Acts chapter 20. And let's look at something here, because I want you to understand that not only is the community, now, now I understand in churches, we, we all have a time we do it. Now, we usually do it the first Sunday night of the month. Usually. <laughs> Joe, Joe sometimes will come in here and say, Pastor, I got communion. And it's like, oh, too late. I didn't go past it. Just blew right past it. <laughs> Hallelujah. We do try to do it on the first Sunday. Isn't that right, Joe? <laughs> yep. <laughs> now, I guess what we need to do is get one of those plexiglass communion tables and uh, set that up. Because when I was in church, we, we always had the elements on the table at the beginning of service. And that way you wouldn't forget. You know, I get caught up in stuff I forget. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, see me in action. All right. Now, but most churches have a set time. Some people do it once a quarter, once a month, once a week. I mean, whatever. You know, now, now, your liturgical churches do it uh, every Sunday. They have, they have Holy Eucharist every Sunday as part of their, as part of their liturgical, their, lit, their, their, their liturgy. It's part of the whole, the whole symbolism thing. Okay? Um, but whenever you perceive the Lord's table. Now, apparently it was so strong in the early church, they broke bread daily. Mm-hmm. Why? Understand the power of what breaking bread together. The communion. Listen, not eating. Not going, not going to IHOP and having strawberry pancakes with two inches of whipped cream on top of them. Now, I can say that because I don't eat that kind. I do not like... I'm not into breakfast foods with chocolate in it. Like pancakes with chocolate, but syrup and sausage, it just doesn't work for me. Now, some people it works for. I'm, my breakfast, I'm, I'm a breakfast kind, I'm a sausage and eggs, you know, with, with cheese and grits. Yeah, cheese in my grits. Hallelujah. No, don't you put sugar in my grits. 
who in the world? So I ate tasted some grits one time. Somebody put sugar. I thought, my God, come out. What have you done to my grits? Hallelujah. I'm not talking about, we're not talking about getting together and just eating stuff. This is, break, we're breaking bread. What are we doing? We're receiving the Lord's table together. We're, we're showing his death till we come. What's happening when people are getting together and breaking bread together? They're reminded of why they're together. This is part, in, in one instance, it's an element or, or, of the koinonia of the church. Yeah. Where we break bread together. We, we partake of the body of the Lord together. We drink of the cup of the New Testament in his blood together. Glory to God. And it brings a unity as we break bread together. If we rightly discern the Lord's body. You can't be over here taking the Lord's table, ticked off at somebody over here taking the Lord's table, and think you're rightly discerning the Lord's body. That don't work. Say that garbage for Dr. Phil. Let him give you some psychological goobity gawk about how that works. Of course, he doesn't have a venue anymore because Oprah went off the air. He was messed up. People just, people just get all hung up with Dr. Phil and Oprah and all these, these lunatics. Just go to your Bible. Did I say lunatics? I, I meant um, not illuminated. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. <laughs> now, when you come to receive the Lord, see, if we were really receiving the Lord's table, Paul got mad. He said, you're, you're over here, you're letting somebody go without, you're over here eating all this, they're starving. Then you come and you're going to say, oh, we're taking the Lord's table. He said, you better stop that mess. We're to come together around the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and show his death until he comes again. And I am telling you, you've got to rightly discern his body. Amen. Amen. That means you have to clean your act up. Amen. Because if you would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Amen. <laughs> we need to be going and looking and, and, looking and saying, Lord, oh my. I'm about to partake of your body and the blood, and there is animosity. There is anger. There is even hatred in my heart towards my brother or sister. You better rightly discern the Lord's body because if you don't, that calls the people not doing that are weak, sickly, and dead. Mm -hmm. That's not the category of the group of people you want to go jump in with. Yeah. Where's my mini choir back here? <laughs> I mean, I need, those, I need those little guys that have one of those beer commercials. You know, just give me a little mini choir up here. <laughs> they can say amen whenever I want to. <laughs> After I get them saved and off the beer. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Think about that. Think about eating the body of the Lord. We understand. Um, this is a blood covenant meal, mm -hmm. and the, 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 the bread represents his body, and, the, and, and I do not believe in transmutation. I do not believe that the, the body actually becomes his flesh, the, the bread actually becomes his flesh, or the, the grape juice actually becomes his blood. That is, that is not a biblical teaching. It is a representation of it. It represents it. Are you here? As a matter of fact, God would not tell you to do something he forbade specifically in the law was do not eat, drink, eat the blood or drink the blood of the animals. No. Now how is he going to turn right around and literally have you drink the blood of Jesus? That's that, 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 is, that is contrary to the word of God. It is a symbolic thing. And when you study blood covenant through history, the more civilized tribes always used the blood of the grape to represent human blood when they made blood covenant. It was only the heathenistic, I mean the pure, pure heathen, cannibal type people who actually drank real blood. Okay? But you go study blood to cover. Well, where did that come from? It came from, it came from biblical practices. Jesus saying, he said, this, this, this bread is my body, represents his body. Amen. 
And the, the cup of the Testament represented his blood. Amen. Okay. It wasn't, it, so I don't, believe it's tra- I don't believe it's literally transmutated into that. I just don't believe that. I don't believe it's biblical. Just, well, that's what I was taught. Well, prove it. He didn't, they didn't actually drink his blood. They, they ate the Lord's. They, they, you know, well, you know, what proof do we have from Scripture that it supernaturally became actually his blood and body? There's nothing in the Bible that teaches that that, that happened. Mm-hmm. Somebody just made that up. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff people made up. Hello. Yeah. Why well, do you know? Because it's not in the Bible. You know, cleanliness is next to godliness. The Lord helps those who help themselves. They're all over. The, now, we, we do have a, another book to the Bible called the book of just somebody made it up. The made-up book, all right. But let's get now. Let's go back here. Jesus, can you imagine? We're about to receive of the body of the Lord, which was broken for you. We're about to receive together. And I'm going to tell you something. If we would learn to rightly discern the Lord's body when we're taking the communion table, it would clean up a lot of junk in the church. It get rid of junk in the church. It get rid of this one over here. Uh, uh, mad at that one over there because they did such and such ten years ago. You better stop being ugly because God don't like ugly. Where'd you get that? Denzel Washington, the preacher's wife. Hello? How can you sit at the table of the Lord and hold animosity in your heart against your brother or sister? Well, you don't know what they did to me. Did they nail you to a cross? Hello? Did they beat your body with whips? Did they put a crown of thorn in your head? Did they pluck your beard out? Hello? And while they were doing that, Jesus said, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. As they were stoning Stephen to death. For what? For preaching. He looked up into heaven and saw the Lord standing at the right hand of the Father. And he said, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. Some people just say something ugly to you and you hold them forever. <laughs> How can we receive the take? I'm telling you, if we want unity and we want strength in the church, we have to once again rightly discern the Lord's body. We have to be able to come together and drink of the cup and eat the bread and in love one towards another without animosity and hatred and anger towards one another. I'm telling you, I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm telling you, if you're mad in this past one day, you're in sin. Because the Bible says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. What if it's dark? You got less than 24 hours. Because the sun going to come up and then it's going to go down again. I'm just trying to fix all those who have some excuse. Because there's always somebody looking for an out. What if I get ticked off at night? <laughs> the sun's going to rise and then the sun's going to set. Hello. So you got until it starts going down to get that right. What Nathan, no. <laughs> what was he going to say, Nathan? Fly south. <laughs> it's still going to set. <laughs> what if I'm up at the North Pole and it's, you know, the sun just going like this? <laughs> <laughs> Probably wouldn't get mad at anybody because there won't be anybody up there but polar bears. All right. And Eskimos that you don't speak their language. I blame you for that. (laughs) But we're going to come to the Lord's table. We're going to drink the blood of Jesus. We're going to eat the body of the Lord. And we're going to talk about how good God is. And we're mad at somebody right over here. You're not rightly discerning the Lord's body. I can't, I can't go in the same room with that person. You're not rightly discerning the Lord's body. And I'm telling you, I am telling you by the word of God, you better deal with that and you better deal with it quick because what's coming your way is weak. 
sickliness or dying if you don't get that straight. Yeah, I thought this was a faith church. We live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. You can't violate God's word and then claim faith to get out of it. Hello? I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. Hello? My dad Hagen did. You ever go back and listen to Brother Hagen? Remember, what, remember um, when, he, when he fell down and hurt his arm and they told him he'd never be able to do this again? But then the Lord said, you'll always have a little bit of pain in it because you disobeyed me. Just to remind you, you disobeyed me here. You can't violate God's commandments and God's word and God's laws and expect to get out of it by making a confession or looking at the finished work of Jesus because I'm under grace. You can't come to church and receive the... See, we were, supposed to, we were supposed to come together. We're supposed to break bread together in communion one with the other, rightly discerning the Lord's body. Yeah. Jesus' blood was shed for them just as much as it was shed for you. Hello? How dare we bring that into the church? Y'all hear you going home? Yes. How dare we bring that into the church? When we're supposed to be coming together in the koinonia and breaking bread together, showing the Lord's death till he come so we can be great witnesses to the earth and we're walking around like a bunch of two-year-old sibling rivalries in the house of God yes, and not walking in forgiveness and compassion and love one towards another. Well, I'll walk in love with them when they walk in love with me. The Bible doesn't say that. You walk in love. You walk in forgiveness. Is this getting too heavy for anybody? How many toes are hurting? Any toes hurting yet? We'll have a healing service later. All right. We'll get your toes healed. Now, this particular healing service will be kind of like this. Lord, forgive me for not doing what Pastor's been talking about this morning. That'll be your healing service. You're right. Because I can't lay hands on you and get rid of that. You've got to deal with things, these heart issues in, your, in yourself. Uh -huh. Amen. It is time we grow up. Amen. Amen. It's time we stop being babies that we don't, we don't get our way or we, things don't go like we want them. We get upset about something. We just throw a fit. It's time that we walk according to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I've forgiven them. Oh, really? Remember, remember uh, Dad Hagen talking? How many remember that story? He took a new pastorate. And he, 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 he gave him preaching on a Sunday. He left on Monday to go to the, the uh, conference convention, which you have to go. You understand this in denominations. You got to go because that's when you get your papers renewed and that kind of stuff. And, uh, and, so, and so he got back the following Sunday, preached. And then on that Monday, they were unpacking stuff. And somebody came up the door, knocked on the door, and said, Brother Hagin, I want to talk to you. That was one of the, it was one of the, they had seen her in the church, an older lady in the church. She came in and sat down. And she just kind of uh, talked a little bit. And then she let the cat out of the bag. She said, now, Brother Hagin, I want to let you know. I know, I know somebody's going to tell you, but I want to let you know what happened. And she starts going into this story about how this sister in the church did her wrong, how this sister in the church did that, how she had done this to her. And he said, whoa, 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 sisters, whoa, whoa, when did this happen? She went, well, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And he thought, see, remember he came in that Sunday, left, was gone the whole following week. And this is, and he thought, well, wait, you know, oh, the, the, right after we left town last week, something happened. Yeah. She said, uh, it'll, be, it'll be seven years ago this coming Thursday. And he looked at her, she said, he said, my mouth must have hit the floor because she looked right back and said, oh, now, don't take me wrong now. I've forgiven her all right. But you know, I never will forget what that old devil did to me. Now, he's, he, he's a little bit bolder, and maybe I just need to get like him. He said, he looked there and went, sister, you're a bare-faced liar. Another Texas colloquial expression. Hallelujah. And, and, and she got all upset. You know what? If you forgive them, you're going to let it go. Yeah. Boy, she can recount when it, the day it took place, how it took place. I mean, how she'd done her wrong. But I've forgiven her all right, but I never will forget what that old devil did to me. That's not discerning the Lord's body right. That's not coming to the communion table with your heart pure before the Lord. That's not getting cleansed of those things. Are you here? And Paul admonishes us with a strong admonition that if you don't rightly do these things, then you will be weak, sick, or die. 
Now, not everybody that dies happens because of that. I'm just telling you that this will cause that for you as a Christian. Amen. You'll be weak and sickly. Yeah, I just don't believe that. The Lord showed me. If the Lord didn't show you what the Word says about that, it ain't the Lord. I heard Brother Hagin say this, and I had, to, I had to shout amen. He said, I've heard so many people the Lord told me or the Lord showed me. He said, I'd rather hear a donkey bray in a tin barn at midnight and hear such junk as that. I don't want to hear what the Lord's told you unless what the Lord told you is in balance with the whole counsel of the Word of God. And not you'll get out of doing what God said card. People get these revelations and get them out of jail. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Now we've got to come, if you're going to come and receive the Lord's table here, how can we say we love God whom we cannot see and hate our brother whom we can see? Look over in 1 John. <clears throat> First John 3, <clears throat> verse 11 said, For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain. <laughs> okay. But we don't need the love of Cain, do we? What do you mean? He got mad at his brother and killed him. Not as Cain, who was, of that, who was of that wicked one, and slew him, and, and wherefore, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew him? Because his own works were evil, and his brothers were righteous. I'm telling you right now, if you get mad because somebody's doing the right thing and you're not, you're wrong. There's no, there's, you can't excuse your way out of it. Marvel not, my brother, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed, from, we, we know that we've passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. <laughs> then he goes on there and talks about, you know, verse 18, neither love and, uh, just in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Mm -hmm. Amen. The church must come back to a place that we deny ourselves what the world says is our rights. Because we no longer, it's no longer thou that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. What's that mean? My life is hid. I don't have the right to carry anger because the Lord said I don't. The Lord of my life, the head of the church, the master said forgive. I'm going to tell you something. Go to Mark 11. We, how many love Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24? Yeah, that's, the, that's Brother Hagin's favorite scripture. Yeah. Built his ministry of 70 years on Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. Now, I've heard him preach 25 and 26 too. We love this. Mark 11, 22. Have the faith of God. Have faith in God. Have the faith of God. Have the God kind of faith. Woo! Preach, Pastor. I can have what I say. Yeah! Ha. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, how many whosoever's? I want to raise your hand on this one. So say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Woo! Glory to God! Whosoever can have whatsoever. Yeah! Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. 99.99% of the people stop right there and just run. Yeah, glory to God, I can have what I say. My faith works. I move mountains. Glory to God, I'm rich. I'm wealthy. I'm healthy. I'm wise. Blessings are coming in and blessings are going out. Wherever I go, the blessings of God are already there waiting on me. Yeah! I mean, some folks get. I mean, some people get to go on the Pentecostal. And then some preacher goes and messes it all up. 
because I read verse 25. And, stop. Let me ask you something. In the mathematical equation, 2 plus 2 equals 4, and 3 plus 3 equals 7. Is that equation true or false? <laughs> no, you didn't. I, I said, no, you didn't. Why is it false, church? Because the second half is wrong, and I use the word and in the mathematical equation, 2 plus 2 equals 4, or 3 plus 3 equals 7. Is that true or false? True, because only one part has to be true. So understanding the word and makes a requisition or a requirement that both sides have to be true and in force and in operation for it to work. So we got a lot of people who are believing they receive and confession they shall have and they forgot the end. Come on now. When ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have aught against any. Against who? Well, the Lord told me I didn't have to forgive them because what they did was, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or I've forgiven them all right, but I never will forget what that old devil's done to me. Hello? Listen to this one. <laughs> we love this part. That your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive. Let me say something here. Forgiveness is not just going, I forgive you. There's more to forgiveness than I forgive you. Are you here? Anybody can bust you up. The, yeah, how, many, how many of you ever seen kids? Yeah. Tell them to hug and say, I love you. And you know the only reason they're doing it is because you're standing there with a belt, a switch, or a two-by-four with holes drilled in it, getting ready to fire their back end up if they don't say, I'm sorry. Then you say, say it like you mean it. Uh -huh. yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going to muster it up, but I don't mean it. The only reason I'm saying this is because I'm more afraid of getting the daylights beat out of me. I don't mean it. Hello? Hug them. Tell them you love them. You don't mean it? Anybody can mouth words. There will be people in the church say, I forgive so and so only because it makes them look good. They haven't forgiven them in their heart. And they're not dealing with it scripturally. Come on now. If we're going to rightly discern the Lord's body, if we're going to receive answers to prayer, if our faith is going to work, we're going to have to walk in biblical forgiveness. Hello? What's biblical forgiveness? How God forgave you? Mm. Let's do the Jeopardy song real quick while you think on that. Boom, boom. All right. You've had your moments to think about it. How, let me ask you something. Can I, can I be real honest with you? How many of you are happy with God forgiving you like you forgive people? Might need to do that Jeopardy thing again. Anyway, think about it. What if the Lord said, I've forgiven you all right, but I never will forget what you did. Mm -hmm. What if every time your name was mentioned before the throne, God says, yep, they're under the blood, but I want to tell you, I'm still mad about how they did such and such. And y'all got quiet in this Pentecostal shouting, running church all of a sudden. Because I'm going to tell you, if I was preaching, which I kind of thought I was going to get to, I, that may, no one won't. <laughs> it's after 12. 
Catholics will get to the blood they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. If I was preaching on the blood of the Lamb, the word of your testimony, you have what you say, and all good things are coming on you, you'd be shouting, running, hallelujah. But if you can't do this, you ain't going to get this. Your, your shout and your run ain't going to produce nothing. You might get in shape. Hello. Y'all hear you going home. We have, if we're going to forgive, we're going to have to forgive like God forgives. Well, I can't. See, now let's, talk, now let's talk about the grace of God here. Remember, the grace of God is, the, you know, I, we've talked about this. You have to go listen to my series. I don't have time to go back and teach this all over again. But the grace of God is an empowerment to do what God says do. Yes, Lord. So when, when something happens and you make it, I, Lord, I forgive them. And I receive the grace of God to walk in love with them. And free from the captivity of the anger and the resentment caused by that event, I forgive them like you forgave. And you forgave me so great, you said you move my iniquities as far from me as the east is from the west. Mm -hmm. uh, for some of us, the people we're mad with, their iniquities are in our shirt pocket. We just pull it out like a, like a business card. <laughs> As soon as her name is mentioned, here it is. If you're going to walk in success as a Christian, that a, I didn't say worldly success, I said biblical success, godly success, pleasing to the Father. You're going to have to do some forgiving, and I mean Bible forgiving. I'm glad we don't allow rotten tomatoes in our church. I got the feeling I might be, I may be covered right now. But I am telling you that, I, that the church spent so much time in breaking bread together and Paul reproved them when they got out of line because it's so important. So we, we talk about, oh, we want to see the power. We want to see the dead raised. We want to see the sick healed. We want to see the glory of God in manifestation. And the reason we're not seeing more of it in our churches is there's too much junk in the church that needs to be gotten out. We've got to get back to a place Hello? What Paul said, he said, I'm willing to spend and be spent for the gospel's sake. Hello? I'm willing to lay down everything that's, that I have a right to, that you can say I have a, I, I should get or should have in my behalf. I'm willing to be made a mockery of. I'm willing to be spend, spent for the gospel's sake. Because the body is more important than me getting my way. Amen. And you know you've gone long enough when the babies have had it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. <coughs> I'm, not, I'm not angry. But I'm telling you, if we, were, if we want to see the power, we want to see the glory, we want to walk in authority, we want you to walk in success. And if you can't, if you can't rightly discern the Lord's body, you cannot walk in success. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. Success is not how much money you got in your bank account. Yeah. Lack of success is not the lack of how much money is in your bank account. Success is do you please the Father. And if you don't walk in forgiveness and absolute love and, and reconciliation and restoration, you're not pleasing the Father. Because your faith won't work. Because faith works by love. That went ever so big. Can I get at least one holy grunt? How about two help me Jesuses? Help me, help me, help me, Lord! <laughs> We'll get a group up here and put up our arms together around and let you get in the middle and just go, help me, help me, help me, Jesus. Now, I'm going to tell you something. How Jesus will help you is when you start acting on his word, his grace will empower you to carry it out. Yeah, right. Thank God. Amen. My, 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 my beloved brothers and sisters, how imperative it is for us to individually maintain a pure heart before God. And do not deceive yourself. If you think you can hold anger and resentment toward a brother or sister and have a pure heart before God, you are sadly deceived. 
And the worst deception is self-deception. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you. We preached as you showed us to preach this morning. And I thank you that you've addressed hearts and addressed hearts. And thank you that whatever, as this goes out over the, over the internet, I thank you that it's ministered life to those who've watched or those who've listened. And I think that there's a, there, there's, there are people uh, restoring relationships in, in the body of Christ. There are people uh, walking in biblical forgiveness towards their brother or sister. Thank you that what has been spoken this morning will bring liberty and freedom to the hearer. Hallelujah. And strength to the body as the works of the enemy are cast out by their actions of walking according to the word. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. His heads are remaining bowed and the eyes are closed. If you're here this morning and you're not born again, what do you mean born again? If you've never come to the place where you said, Jesus Christ, come into my heart and be my Lord, you're, you know, you can. Again, I'm not asking if you've received First Communion. I'm not asking if you've gone through confirmation classes. I'm not asking you... Um, <clears throat> Well, whatever else, you know, whatever else some of the churches do. If you join the Sunday school, join the church, shake the preacher's hand. Now, I'm not asking if you've been water baptized. I'm asking you, have you ever confessed that Jesus is your Lord and believe God's raised him from the dead? The Bible says you'll be saved. You're not, if you're, that's you this morning, you're not born again, raise your hand. We want to pray with you. Hallelujah. Our second offer is, Pastor Ed, I'm born again. I know, I know. There's a time in my life I came to know the Lord. But I'm backslid. Now, we get real cute these days. We call it broken fellowship. Backslid. If you didn't go forward, if you ain't going forward, you're going backwards. So I'm not right with God. I need to be right with God. Would you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. We'll get you right with God. Hallelujah. Third offer this morning. Pastor, I love the Lord with all my heart, but I want that baptism in the Holy Ghost. Zach, what Acts 2 4 says, they were all baptized with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We'll lay hands on you. Send you away filled with the Holy Ghost this morning. Praise God. Anybody here? All right, look up at me. I'll accept your testimony. Hallelujah. Now, if you, did, if you needed any prayer on one of the, any one of those accounts and didn't raise your hand, come up to the front of the service. We'll make sure somebody gets with you and helps you. Hallelujah. And we'll, we'll get, you, get you the things you need. Amen. Praise God. We love you. Praise the name of Jesus. I love you. Listen, listen, it'd be easier. Let me tell you something. It'd be easier right now to stop preaching what we preach and start teaching this, this new thing everybody loves so much. Churches are exploding because they've, they've compromised and start teaching this stuff. It'd be easier. But the price that's paid in the end yeah. isn't worth it. What's the price? I must obey God. I must fulfill my, my commission to preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Amen. To, to take the Word of God and to, and to reprove, rebuke, instruct, and correct. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's what the Word of God's for. Prophet for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. I have, you know, sometimes the Word of God does reprove us or rebuke us. Why? Word of God says in that, in that part also, but the four things, the Word of God, all Scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. See, if there's things in your life that are a hindrance and we don't, we don't dress that with the Word of God, then you won't be thoroughly furnished for every good work. God wants you thoroughly furnished to every good work. Amen. And so this morning we shared our heart as we got into the communion table. There's too much junk in the church that can't be in the church. We have to get back into walking in love and forgiveness one towards another so that it doesn't affect the body. I mean, it doesn't affect you. <clears throat> strong individuals make strong bodies. I mean, every part is strong, then the whole is strong. What's the, what's the statement about a chain? It's the it's strength is lies in the weakest link. You can take the biggest, heaviest, I mean, you can take ship anchor chains. Hold out a whole bunch of weight and put one bicycle link in there. And guess what? The strength of that chain has reduced completely to the lowest common denominator of that one weak link. The body is only as strong 
as, as the, the weakest member. And I just, you understand I'm not trying to make anybody out the weakest member. I understand. When we walk and strive to be strong in the things of God and walk according to the Word of God, we strengthen the whole. The whole becomes stronger. Amen?